What's up everyone, it's Joey, Blush Response, and today we're taking a look at the Dave Smith Mono Evolver Keyboard. Let's get right into it. All right, so we got the Mono Evolver Keyboard here. In my opinion, the Evolver series were Dave Smith's most interesting synthesizer because it combined all of his old ideas as well as every new idea he had for a synth in one, with the exception of sampling from the Prophet 2000. This has the Prophet 5 Pro 1 and Prophet VS ideas all of inside of it as well as everything new. So you got two analog oscillators with stereo detuning. Stereo is a really big focus of this synth. Uh, and you got two digital oscillators that have the Prophet VS waveforms. We'll hear the digital ones. The analog ones are pretty standard, but with these ones you have ring mod. Um, see if I bring the output spread to mono. You can hear some ring mod happening there. And they can do ring mod on each other. Really good for making telemetry sounds. There's so much range in that. Of course, it's a step control, but you can do it with the modulation and the mod wheel. Finding that with FM. And you're a dial-up modem. Love it, love it. Anyway, let's get back to like a real pitch here. And I love the sound of those oscillators. We'll, we'll take FM to zero, take ring mod to zero. We'll start scanning through some waveform. We'll bring the output spread back. You can invert the outputs right and left switch or go full mono. I love this output spread function. You can also do this with the filtering. And yeah, the controls are step, but it doesn't matter when you're using modulators to do this. So, okay, we'll scan some waveforms. After a certain number, you can um, use this sound tower editor to add in your own waveforms. You can draw them in, or you can drop in a sample or piece of audio, and it will convert it to a single cycle wave, which is really cool. I've done it a few times. Then you got your FM again. I want to just drone. Can do that with this VCA level, which is nice because as a drone machine, this thing is amazing. And it has this comb filter, the tune feedback, which was one of his new ideas. With a grunge feature to noise it out. And this synth is all about noise. I feel like in his later synths to incorporate these ideas, mainly the Prophet 12 and the Pro 2, this was diluted because it was all a bit cleaner. We have this output hack, which is a bit crusher. On the entire output, and in the Prophet 12 and Pro 2, that's before the filter, so you see what I mean? I, I imagine it has to do with the demands of the market, like, everything he did after this uh, falls into the realm of what I call dad synths, like the Prophet 5 or the OBX8 or the Prophet 6. It's all recreating past glories for people who wanted them since they were young and now have the money, and I get it, those make money, they sell, and they sound amazing, but this was fresh, and I would love to see them do something fresh. Got this high pass. No resonance on it, but I love it. Low pass. It's this Curtis chip filter. Also in the Tempest. I like the sound of this filter. I didn't like it so much when I first had it. I used this extensively on Fear Factory's uh, album, The Industrialist, which has just been reissued in a new version with new mixing and mastering, as far as I know. And my old remix of Dinford's Engine is on there as well. I did the remix like 11 years ago. The Polyvolver is on it doing kind of the main dubstep y bass sound. Keep in mind it's 11 years old, so the production is not up to snuff with my newer stuff, but it was cool back then, I'm, I'm happy with it. 
So why do I like this so much? There's a lot of factors. Like this distortion, which can fuck any sound immediately. That gain boost, you got audio mod, which makes the entire audio path, FM, the synth, the filter, I mean. You got your tune feedback again. You can make that key track if you want. Sounds like crazy. And then you got this three tap delay just for added fun. With two feedback paths, one going back into the delay and one going back through the audio path. It's unclocked or clocked. So it's about finding sequence it. With some drums. Let's tune those oscillators. So sounds cool like that. I'm using push three for sequencing.
free tap delay. A little bit of key tracking. I love these delays. And you got LFOs that can go to like almost anything. Do it to FM amount. Mind you, there's four LFOs, extensive mod matrix. You can assign almost anything. Even using oscillators three and four as modulators. Do that and modulate the uh, low pass. What I use, oscillator three. Yeah. Make it mono. Dirty. Smoking. This thing is noise heaven. We'll bring the analog also. And the levels are really crazy. Like you can clip the synth at multiple points, so you have to make a point to watch your levels. And that's with no distortion at all, or almost none. Bring in that delay. Bring up oscillator slap. This is certainly one of the most brutally aggressive synthesizers ever made, and that's really special.
changing the sequence up. Crazy. Tune in all gosslers. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes.
Evolver. So that was brutal. I think the Evolver is one of the most aggressive synthesizers ever made and a testament to Dave Smith's pioneering ideas. Uh, imagine the climate at the time in 2000, 2001, when I think this came out, maybe a little bit later, where there were basically no analog synths around. And on top of that, there were no synths that were capable of sounds like this. And he took all of his old ideas and all of the new ideas he would use and he created something amazing. Uh, the synthesizer, uh, definitely made some waves when it came out and it made some waves for me in this demo. I love it to death. I'm so happy to have it back. Um, I really do think that his new synthesizers don't try as hard to be weird or cool and that bums me out. Um, obviously rest in peace Dave Smith. The man doesn't owe anyone anything at all but I wish um, he took more risks with his later designs. All of the most recent synths are just rehashes of old analog ideas. And while they sound beautiful, there's no new territory being explored where the Evolver had basically was all new territory. And I think that's really special. Samples of this gym and other gems are gonna be up on my Patreon as always. Check out Fear Factory's Reindustrialize if you wanna hear my synth work on them, on their music. Uh, it's just been re-released with my old remix and everything and there's new drums added and new mastering and production as far as I know. But all my sounds are there and it's exciting to hear them in a refresh manner. Um, I've announced a new album called Dimensional Research with Erica Sintz. I'm going to have a link to an interview talking about it in the video description and pinned comment, as well as Neuroscape, which has been out for some time now, and my release uh, with my project Hakai with my partner Yagoda. Uh, both of those are available on the Megastructure Bandcamp as well as all the releases from my artists. Check those out. Uh, if you want to support the channel, you can buy some gear or anything from the affiliate links in the video description and pinned comment below, as well as there's an affiliate link to Dist DistroKid where you can distribute your music and I'll get a kickback from that. Don't forget to subscribe on Patreon and don't forget to smash like and subscribe here. Until next time, peace out.